What is up guys? So Crisis on Infinite Earths just ended and I think it ended pretty well but there are obviously a couple things that they missed out on, a couple things they didn't end up doing that might have left people pretty uh, disappointed. I think the biggest thing that they missed out on, the, the biggest thing that they left out would probably be the Reverse Flash who was like the main focus of all the Crisis setup before the last year of the Arrowverse, basically before Elseworlds came around. It was basically just about the Flash and the Reverse Flash and what do you know it, the Reverse Flash doesn't even make an appearance even though he also appeared in one of the trailers like you can see his red lightning in one of the trailers for the second half of the crossover it's very weird what happened here but it was answered by Mark Guggenheim why they didn't end up including a reverse flash also why they didn't end up including characters like Black Canary or other or other characters in maybe more episodes specifically Cisco and Iris why they weren't in any of the episodes past the flashes episode and I'll get into that right here in this video there are a couple other things I want to talk about that I probably would to make about like I, I probably want to make a single video about it so I'll talk about it here let's start with the reverse flash and why Mark Guggenheim decided that they're not going to include him in the crossover the main reason Reverse Flash wasn't in the crossover according to Mark Guggenheim is because they didn't want to be beholden to what one of the shows set up. They wanted to do this whole storyline regardless of what a different show set up, which would be The Flash. The Flash set up the Crisis of 2024 all the way back in its very first episode, teasing a fight between The Flash and Reverse Flash with originally Hawkgirl, I think with the Atom and, and Green Arrow were there. Later it had like Batwoman and Elongated Man, but it was always mainly The Flash and Reverse Flash fighting, which ended up in Reverse Flash going back to the year 2000 to kill Younger Barry, which ended in the death of Nora Allen, and setting up The Flash Season 1. The Flash Season 5 changed this so that instead of 24, 2024, it happened in 2019, and it did seem like the present-day Thawne, the Tom Cavanaugh one from 2049, would be in this crossover, instead of maybe the earlier one, the Matt Letcher version, but in the end, neither of them, and then them appeared, and the reason for this is because Mark Guggenheim didn't want to be beholden to what one of the show's set up, which I am kind of torn on this. On one hand, I definitely understand where he's coming from. The Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline honestly doesn't really have very much room for the whole Flash versus Reverse Flash storyline, since it's not a Flash story for the most part. It's a Justice League storyline, or a DC multiverse storyline, that happens to very prominently feature the Flash. So it'd be weird to like single him out with his own villain, single him out to make the, his villain the main villain of it all, but also because I feel like when they started setting up the Crisis all the way back in the Flash Season 1, Episode 1, they had no idea where the Arrowverse was going to end up back then. It was only one universe, that's Earth-1. Later, they added Earth-38 and then, like, Earth-2 and things like that. But I think they never expected to get this far to not only have a whole multiverse, but also connect it to other TV shows like Lucifer and Titans and Smallville and other movies like the, even the DC Extended Universe and Green Lantern and movies like that. They had no idea they were ever going to get there. So they thought the Crisis on Infinite Earths would have to be, I think, just scaled down a lot to the point where it's only a couple heroes and it's mainly the reverse flash as the main villain so going into this they never expected that they, they would get here but now that they have there just there isn't any room for the reverse flash there isn't any room for that scale down storyline that mainly focuses on the flash and there's barely any heroes there so i get that part of it but on the other hand i mean they set this up and it's going to lead people to disappointment people were excited to finally see this 2024 which is now 2019 showdown between the flash and the reverse flash which set up the flash season one and they never they never gave us that they've been teasing it for years and it just never happened and that's going to be a huge source of disappointment for a lot of people and I think it's weird for them to have been setting up something for years, and when they get to that, they just don't do that. It'd be so unusual. It'd basically be like if they've been setting up Infinity War for years, and in the end, they just did it. They don't include the Infinity Gauntlet. Maybe it's not like that uh, prominent. Maybe it's not that important to the Crisis, but it's still very weird to set something up for years. That's been the main source of this crossover being set up since the beginning, all the way up to Elseworlds, where they started setting up with other things. But it's just it'd be, it's really weird for them to do that however again i do understand that they never expected they would get this far and now that they have there isn't any room for that more scaled down storyline with the reverse flash and the flash in my opinion i think there's a pretty easy way to rectify this the flash doesn't look like it's going anywhere it's still the most
host, the highest rated show on the CW, and I doubt it's going to uh, be cancelled anytime soon, so maybe try to make it so that it goes to season 10. On season 10, it'll be in 2024. Maybe the Crisis of 2024 is a completely separate event from Crisis on Infinite Earths. The Crisis of 2024 would be a lot more scaled down than Crisis on Infinite Earths, and the main villain would be the Reverse Flash. Then the show could go full, full circle with uh, season 10, all going back to season 1, where it's it, it had to be the Matt Letcher version of, of the Reverse Flash, but in that season, the Reverse Flash from the future, who barely knows anything about the Flash other than his identity, Entity, comes back and fights in this crisis, then he goes back to the present day, to the year 2000, to kill a younger Barry, he kills Nora Allen instead, and thus setting up the Flash Season 1, all of that going full circle from the Flash Season 10 to the Flash Season 1, that way I think that you can make it so that the crises are separate, so that people aren't disappointed by the fact that the Reverse Flash not only didn't appear in Crisis on Infinite Earths, but also the whole storyline, all the setup just never happened, instead make the crises separate, and the one in 2020 four is the one that's been set up from the very beginning. I think it could either be a crossover or it could even be the, a season of The Flash, so I'm pretty sure the Crisis of 2024 happened in May, which would be the end of the season, not the crossover part, so maybe you could do that. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Either way, I think the crises should be separate, since it literally makes no sense narratively, it makes no sense with the Arrowverse that the Reverse Flash didn't end up appearing in Crisis on Infinite Earths, and again, I get why they did this, because I never expected to get this far with the multiverse, but I, under I also understand why a lot of people are disappointed. While a lot of people are disappointed that Reverse Flash didn't appear, uh, one character I was actually more disappointed didn't appear was Black Canary, as her setup from Arrow Season 8 just it made no sense that not only she didn't appear, but also she didn't end up being a Paragon, because I really think she should have been. The storyline in Arrow Season 8 of Earth 2 being destroyed and then she was deliberately tested by the Monitor, and she was rewarded by the Monitor after she passed that test, and how prominently she was shown in Arrow Season 8, and then for her to not appear in the cr crossover, and also, I think she, she, she deserved to be a paragon. It's so weird to me. Mark Guggenheim gave an answer for why she didn't end up appearing, and it's honestly, it's not a satisfying answer, as it's no narrative reason. It's just budgetary. Mark Guggenheim said that they couldn't bring in every actor, which I understand. This this would be a very scaled-down version of Crisis on Infinite Earths. what I expected. However, they there are certain characters that you just had to include, and there are other characters that you didn't really. I think that Black Canary could have easily switched out Mia Smoke in these episodes, maybe a different character as appearing in this crossover, or because she was so important to Arrow Season 8, she could have been, should have been a paragon, and considering her Arrow Season 8 storyline, that it just doesn't make sense to me that she didn't appear, even if the budgetary restrictions made it so that they couldn't bring her in, because Marco and I have said they have to pay the actors more money for the crossover episodes, which I guess makes sense, crossover episodes are typically more difficult to shoot, I'm guessing that's why they have to pay them more money, but but I feel like there are certain characters who did appear that didn't necessarily need to, but Laura Lance should have instead. Sticking with Laurel, there was another question about her to Mark Guggenheim, where she, he was asked whether or not this new Laurel is the Earth-1 Laurel, or the Earth-2 Laurel, or some amalgamation of the characters. He answered that we're going to learn in the next episode, or the next two episodes, episode 9 and episode 10, which is coming out in a couple days, so I'm just going to guess right now what it's going to be. I think they're going to reveal that one of the universes that was amalgamized into Earth-Prime was Earth-2. There's Earth-1, Earth, Black Lightning, or 38, and also Earth-2 amalgamized into the Earth Prime, because Earth 2 now is Stargirl's universe, and that's a completely different universe from the Earth 2 that we know until this point, which means that Earth 2 had to go somewhere, and I'm guessing it was amalgamized into Earth Prime, and now what we're seeing with Laurel is an amalgamation of the Earth 1 and Earth 2 Laurels, possibly with a past with Oliver, but also she used to be a criminal, and now she has superpowers, unlike the Earth 1 Laurel. I'm guessing that's probably where they're going with this version of the character, which I think is pretty interesting, but I guess we're gonna have to wait a couple days, a couple weeks maybe, to learn whether or not that's true. Mark Guggenheim also said that the Smallville characters are living out the retired lives that we saw in Part 2, which I'm guessing means Earth-167 is exactly the same as it was in the old multiverse. The last thing that he talked about, and it's not the last thing I'm, I'm going to talk about here, the last thing I'm going to talk about from Mark Guggenheim has to do with the Ezra Miller cameo in Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's just more of a fun detail, he said. He said that Warner Brothers reached out to them, and Warner Brothers wanted Ezra Miller to appear in the crossover, not the other way around. It's not like the Crisis on Infinite 
Brothers, the people behind the crossover, have to reach out to Warner Brothers, have to reach out to people behind the DC Extended Universe to allow them to use Ezra Miller's Flash. Warner Brothers reach out to them, which I think really shows the status of the DC Universe right now. The Arrowverse is a higher status than the DC Extended Universe. The fact that Warner Brothers has to reach out to them to for them to use Ezra Miller's Flash is pretty crazy to me, but also it might signify that they might be doing something with this concept. It might be signifying that Warner Brothers saw an opportunity to have these flashes on screen together, show people's reactions, see people's reactions, and maybe do something with that. Maybe they're going to be doing some sort of crossover in the future. Maybe they're going to do some sort of movie involving these two flashes. Maybe like a Flash of Two Worlds concept. Maybe this version of Flash, uh, that's the Grant Gustin one, will appear in the Flash's movie, which apparently is about Flashpoint, so that could be interesting. Regardless, though, I think, I think this is a fun detail, and I also think it really shows the status of the Arrowverse and the DCEU. One last thing to talk about is there has been apparently been a leak for the new Superman suit we're going to be seeing in Superman and Lois, which I gotta say, I'm really excited about this. I think that Superman suit on Supergirl looked good initially, looking like next to all the other Arrowverse suits like the Flash, Green Arrow, even Supergirl, it looked just as good, if not maybe better than some of them. However, going into earlier, to later seasons, mainly the newest one, all of the Trinity members got new suits, a lot of other superheroes got new suits, and in Crisis on Infinite Earth, Superman just looked like like so much lower quality, his costume, I mean, than the other costumes in the Arrowverse, so I'm, I'm so glad he's getting a new one. This is the concept art for the new suit, which I think looks really good. It looks way higher quality, like, uh, this is just a concept art, we can't really tell what the quality is going to look like in the end, but I do think based off of this, it looks way higher quality, it looks a lot closer to the Kingdom Come suit quality, as opposed to his current suit, which I'm guessing if they had the, if they had the material, if they had the resources to make that suit for a character who was only going to appear in two episodes, three episodes, really with a cameo in the end, then I'm sure they could do the same thing for this character who's going to be a series regular for the entire show, and he's the main character of that show, so I'm guessing it's going to be that same material, that same quality with this design, and when it comes to the design, I really, really like it. It's definitely based off the, I think, the Rebirth costume, which is probably the best uh, the best Superman suit ever, which is, it basically takes the best elements of every costume, it takes the lack of uh, red trunks of the new 52 costume, which I really like, and the brighter blue of the pre new 52 costume, which I also like a little bit more. And while this suit definitely looks a little bit darker than the Rebirth suit, I do really like the design. I really like the coloring. I basically like everything about the suit, even the belt, which is yellow. I always thought that the red belt and the way it's positioned on his costume looked weird. This one, however, I think is going to be looking very, very good. And they are keeping the, sh the uh, cape, the design of it connecting to the uh, costume in that way, just like Supergirl suit right now and Superman suit as well. I like that. People don't like it. I don't know why. I think it looks pretty cool, honestly. And also, you could tell the logo is going to be raised, as you can see in the image up there, which I think, all in all, will probably make this suit a lot better than his previous suit, and overall, a great costume. So I'm really excited for this new costume. I'm really excited for the Superman and Lois show. It's easily my most anticipated new Arrowverse show that we're getting uh, coming forward. So anyway, that's it for this video. Just a couple questions and answers from Mark Cook and I, but also Superman's new suit. Let me know your thoughts on everything I talked about in the comments down below. More specifically, what you think about the reverse Flash not appearing, Black Canary not appearing, and Warner Bros. reaching out to the Arrowverse about Ezra Miller, and also, I guess, Superman's new suit. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.